Elon Musk is the world's richest man because he's close to making self-driving cars a reality and unlocking trillions of dollars in new markets. That's why he's making sure that Tesla has the best sensors, the most data, and the fastest AI. But there's just one problem. Elon Musk isn't racing against any one company. He's racing against them all. Nvidia is the world's leading AI company, and thanks to what they just announced, the race for full self-driving could be much closer than you think. Hyperion 8 can achieve full self-driving with a 360-degree camera, radar, LiDAR, and ultrasonic sensor suite. Hyperion 8 will ship in Mercedes-Benz cars starting in 2024, followed by Jaguar Land Rover in 2025. Want to know who's really winning? My name is Alex, and I'll show you by looking at the science behind these stocks. I want to make it clear that this isn't about Tesla somehow being bad, and I'm not rooting for them to fail. Far from it. I've made episode after episode talking about Tesla's incredible engineering, but full self-driving is an artificial intelligence problem and Nvidia builds artificial intelligence solutions. At their most recent GPU tech conference, Nvidia revealed a lot of technologies and partnerships for full self-driving, including what will be the most powerful supercomputer in the world. So let's take a step back and look at the road for full self-driving. Then we'll see just how neck and neck these two companies actually are. We can break things down into four parts, collecting and analyzing data, training AI models on supercomputers, testing and simulation, and controlling the actual car. Let's start with collecting and analyzing data. As of early 2022, Tesla removed radar from their cars, so they rely on only cameras to map the world and navigate it. One big advantage in using only cameras is that the data comes back in just one format, video. That means Tesla can optimize everything they do for video, from their research and development teams to their in-car hardware and software, and even their supercomputers. That's a huge benefit. Cameras are also pretty inexpensive, making Tesla's cars cheaper up front and cheaper to maintain overall, which is another huge selling point. But it could also be a risk if there are certain situations on the road that can't be solved by vision only. However unlikely, these edge cases could pop up over time and cause issues for Tesla. For example, what if governments start passing safety regulations that require self-driving cars to have two independent sensing systems, like a camera system up front and a backup LiDAR system? That would be pretty bad for Tesla's end-to-end -end design. On the other hand, we have the Drive Hyperion system. Think of this as Nvidia's version of Tesla's cameras and full self-driving chip, but with a few key differences. Nvidia just announced Hyperion 9, which supports up to 14 cameras, 9 radars, 3 LiDARs, and 20 ultrasonic sensors. Oh yeah, and it doubles the processing speed of their current system, which is the Hyperion 8. With all these sensors, the Hyperion platform gives automakers many different tools for different scenarios, including those risky unknown edge cases I just talked about. Nvidia's Hyperion architecture is modular, meaning automakers can pick and choose from the parts they need. Not every automaker wants to offer full self-driving. Some just want premium features like drive assist, self-parking, and smart summon. Hyperion also comes with a developer kit, meaning there will be a big community from across the auto industry working on these challenges together. So by providing self-driving as a platform, Nvidia is essentially allowing the rest of the auto industry to crowdsource many of the challenges that Tesla is currently tackling alone. If sensors and microchips are the drivers, then supercomputers are like driver's ed. Think about all the different combinations of road conditions and hazards and traffic situations, levels of visibility, and all of the surprises that can happen in all of those circumstances. Now imagine trying to teach someone to perfectly handle all of them at once. That would take a massive amount of data and practice and testing. Well, supercomputers are where the self-driving AI gets trained and tested before getting loaded into the chips inside the cars. At their most recent AI day, Tesla did a great job breaking supercomputers down into just two basic parts, the chips that crunch the numbers and the networks that link the chips together. So when Tesla and Nvidia say they have crazy fast supercomputers, they actually mean two things. First, the chips they're using can do a lot of math every second, which is measured in floating point operations per second, or flops. Then, the chips are networked together to move data between them really fast. The speed of data transfer is called bandwidth, and it's measured in bytes per second. Now that you're basically a supercomputer expert, let's compare these two truly mind-blowing machines. 
Tesla's number cruncher is called the training tile. That's what they'll be networking together to build their supercomputer. It's made up of a bunch of smaller chips already networked together to look like one powerful AI training chip. How powerful? Nine petaflops, or nine million billion math operations per second. Wow, I don't remember driver's ed being that hard. These tiles also have a lot of bandwidth to transfer data super fast. How fast? 36 terabytes per second. That's fast enough to transfer Netflix's entire movie library between tiles every couple seconds. Then they take 12 of those tiles, package them up, put them in a server cabinet, and connect 10 cabinets together to form an exapod, which has one exaflop of computing power. That's a lot of flops. Tesla has built a truly world-class machine, but where things get iffy is if Tesla wants to offer AI training as a service to other companies, because Tesla's supercomputer loses about two-thirds of its bandwidth when transferring data between cabinets. Where that really starts to matter is if they want to connect multiple exopods, which is exactly what NVIDIA just announced they did. NVIDIA's supercomputer is called EOS, and it's made up of 18 superpods, each of which have one exaflop of compute power just like Tesla's, but Jensen Huang spent a lot of time talking about how they solve this bandwidth problem because NVIDIA wants to offer AI training as a service. So NVIDIA's supercomputer has 70 terabytes per second of bandwidth at this cabinet level, which is six times more than Tesla's. Tesla's supercomputer does have one very important thing going for it. It's purpose-built to process video data and train self-driving algorithms specifically. So Tesla's workloads not only get priority on their own system, but their whole system is designed to support their work. On the other hand, NVIDIA's supercomputer is much more general purpose, supporting tasks like mapping the human genome, modeling all of the weather on planet Earth at once, which is simulating data. Even if you have mountains of real data like Tesla does, there are a few good reasons to simulate it. If a scenario is very unlikely or very dangerous, like a family running down the middle of a highway, you probably want to simulate that instead of trying to create it in real life. Yeah, don't do that. Another scenario worth simulating is one that's difficult to label, like a very crowded pedestrian crossing. Think about Times Square in New York. All of these pedestrians are passing by each other and blocking each other to the camera, so they're very hard to track and label. But in a simulator, everything already comes pre-labeled, so you just set up your scene and you're done. The third kind of situation worth simulating is one where you want things to happen in a very specific order. Getting a car to repeat the same exact steps with the same exact timing in real life is pretty hard, but it's pretty easy in a simulation. Now that we understand some of the value in simulating data, let's compare how Tesla and Nvidia do it. Tesla has a photorealistic simulator built to recreate scenes that might happen in the real world. It's basically a very high-end video game engine. They also have a camera simulator that makes those scenes look like data that Tesla's specific cameras would have recorded given their lenses and their settings in real life. They use the scene simulator and the camera simulators together to create camera data that they didn't collect in the real world. On top of that, Tesla is building tools to take real world recordings, automatically label them, and recreate them in the simulator. Then they can retrain autopilot and retest it in these recreated scenes to see how it's learning over time. Together, these efforts give Tesla thousands of unique vehicles, pedestrians, and assets to work with, and they've handmade over 2,000 miles of simulated roads with these tools so far. Here's the thing, when it comes to simulating graphics at scale, nobody beats NVIDIA. That's their entire business. NVIDIA is solving the simulation challenge in two different ways. First, they have DriveMap, which is a crowdsourced real-time digital twin of every road that they get footage for. By 2024, they expect to map every major highway in North America, Western Europe, and Asia. That's hundreds of thousands of miles of digital roads that have physical twins in the real world. If NVIDIA knows where a car is in real life, they also know where it is inside this digital twin, which means they have a good idea of what's going on around the car. For example, where all the road lines are, and traffic lights, and curbs, and so on. Then the Hyperion sensors inside the car can double check what they see against that digital twin. And kind of like Tesla's tool, NVIDIA also has Drive Sim, which takes in recorded drive data and turns everything in the scene into an interactive object. Except in NVIDIA's tool, you can add, remove, or change anything in the recording to run a bunch of simulations in that exact environment, or change the environment entirely, with different lighting effects and weather conditions and road hazards. 
That's the kind of work that NVIDIA already does in many different markets today. NVIDIA's Drive Map and Drive Sim can show you what cameras, radars, and lidars would see in each situation, just like Tesla's camera simulator. But because Drive Map and Drive Sim are tied to NVIDIA's Omniverse, many different companies are improving it over time. So that's the trade-off between Tesla doing everything themselves and NVIDIA providing these solutions as a platform. Tesla's tools have one incredible advantage, which is automatic data labeling. If you want to teach an AI what to do when it sees something, you first need to teach it to recognize what that something is. Different kinds of lines on the road, cars that come in different shapes and colors and sizes, snow being kicked up by a truck, and so on. When it comes to training AI, your data is really only as good as your labels. Tesla's data is labeled by machines, which means their full data library is basically growing with every mile that their cars drive. NVIDIA's data is currently being labeled by humans. For ground truth data, we use our deep map HD mapping, human labeled data, and Omniverse replicator. So their library only grows as fast as they can label their data. This is going to be a huge bottleneck until NVIDIA or their partners solve it, and it's worth pointing out. And that leads me to the showstopper for NVIDIA. NVIDIA doesn't actually build cars. They leave that to the automakers who are woefully behind Tesla. It doesn't matter how great the Hyperion platform is or how powerful the EOS supercomputer is until they're actually taking in tons of real data. Meanwhile, Tesla has well over a million cars on the road today with billions of miles of autopilot and full self-driving data. With that much data to draw from, Tesla has trained their self-driving AI to solve problems that NVIDIA still can't solve. For example, here's a situation where a truck ruins the visibility by blowing a lot of snow in front of a Tesla. Since cameras can't see through snow, the Tesla has a hard time figuring out the road lines and loses the car in front of it. So what did Tesla's engineers do? They asked their fleet of cars for every clip where things fall off a vehicle and disrupt the vision of the cameras. Because of Tesla's labeling system, the fleet could return over 10,000 clips of this happening in just one week. Then Tesla took those clips and taught their self-driving AI to remember objects even if it can't see them. Now we've come full circle. This is the workflow for solving full self-driving. You gather and label a ton of driving data in every imaginable driving condition. If you can't get it in real life, you simulate it. Then you use that data to train the AI on a supercomputer and test it on new data coming in as people drive or by getting more data from a simulator. As the AI gets better and better, you send over-the-air updates to the chips inside the self-driving cars. They go out and collect more data, and the cycle repeats. Tesla is already great at every part of this cycle, and already has so much data that they were able to get rid of radars in their cars. This huge advantage actually streamlined Tesla's entire company because if they don't need radar data, they don't need to process radar data or simulate radar data or hire radar engineers. And that means selling cars at lower costs than their competitors who will be relying on radars and lidars to do these same things. NVIDIA is better than Tesla in a few key areas like supercomputing and data simulation. But because Hyperion is a self-driving platform, NVIDIA is only as fast as the car companies using it. Want to know just how bad Tesla is crushing these other car companies? Check out this video next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons to let me know that you've enjoyed the science behind these stocks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.